If we don't change the legislation, if we don't get rid of these loopholes where killers are allowed to come into our country and continue to kill gang members, and we're just talking about MS-13, there are many gang members that we don't even mention. If we don't change it, let's have a shutdown. We'll do a shutdown, and it's worth it for our country. I'd love to see a shutdown if we don't get this stuff taken care of. Let's have a shutdown. Do a shutdown. Here's Donald Trump live talking right now. We don't straighten out our border. We don't have a country. Without borders, we don't have a country. So would I shut it down over this issue? Yes. I can't speak for our great representatives here, but I have a feeling they may agree with me. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Press. Appreciate it. That right there is the, sorry, we had a black frame for a second. That right there was the end of the pool spray. Donald Trump talking about MS-13 and then pivoting uh, to immigration as a whole, saying let's have a shutdown, let's have a shutdown, and talking about how immigration is a problem. President appeared pretty angry right there. Let's get to MSNBC Garrett, like MSNBC's Garrett Hake, who joins us now from, from Capitol Hill. How were those comments right there? Let's have a shutdown almost, you know, spit out of his mouth, let's have a shutdown, going to be received on Capitol Hill. Poorly, Katie. Look, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Congress has a funding deadline that they have to hit by the end of this week. There have been ongoing negotiations in both parties about funding the government, coming up with a long-term budget deal, and working ahead to what's probably going to be an open-ended debate on immigration next week on the floor of the Senate. It's likely every single member of Congress I have talked to in both parties this week has said they expect there will be some kind of a deal to keep the government open essentially until the end of March. So what the president, who's the leader of the Republican Party, which controls both chambers of Congress, is essentially saying is that if he can't get a bill passed that he wants in the next month, perhaps he would shut the government down. It's unclear if he's arguing to shut the government down next week when this debate happens, at which time there is no mechanism to shut the government down. Is so this is the kind of thing that will make people on the Hill, Republicans in particular, pull their hair out, because that is divorced from any version of a Republican strategy that I've heard, or any actual mechanisms for governing over the short or medium term. Is it clear that it, he wants to shut down if he does not get all of the things that he wants in a bill? Is there any room for negotiation. Remember, he wants to end the visa lottery program. He wants to end what he calls uh, chain migration, which what others call family uni reunification. He wants all of the money uh, for his border wall, and then he would allow DACA. If he doesn't get all four of those things, is the president now saying that there should be a government shutdown? Well, the only mechanism the president would have to force a shutdown would be not to sign a bill funding the government that, again, would have had to have been passed by two Republican-controlled houses of government, houses of Congress, which would be extraordinary. And the idea that he would essentially hold government funding hostage for not getting his immigration priorities is exactly what Republicans accused Democrats of doing in the shutdown that we had only three weeks ago. That was the entire Republican talking point, was that Democrats were holding government funding hostage on an unrelated issue. This would be the president of the United States, the leader of that same party, using the exact same tactic that every Republican member who fought against the shutdown had just decried. Garrett, listen to this. Uh, moments ago in that, in that meeting with lawmakers uh, where the press was allowed in for a moment, this happened. We don't have it on camera quite yet. But Congressman Comstock chided uh, Donald Trump over his shutdown threat. He said, we don't need a government shutdown on this. And Emphasizing that both parties uh, see the down, I'm sorry, she said that both parties see the downside of a shutdown and there is bipartisan support for a crackdown on violent gangs. Uh, Trump interrupted Congressman Comstock and reiterated a willingness to risk a government shutdown, Congresswoman, excuse me, uh, over immigration policy. You can say what you want. We're not getting support from the Democrats, Trump said. So this is Donald Trump going after a, a Congresswoman in that meeting saying we're not not going to get support from the Democrats. It seems like his position is pretty baked in. Give me what I want or I'm not going to sign this. 
Which is extraordinary and also extraordinary that he's doing this with uh, Barbara Comstock, who is a pretty savvy Republican politician who represents Northern Virginia, who's been targeted by Democrats ever since she was elected, has a ton of federal workers in her district, so she knows the cost of her government shutdown uniquely well. Also, she's in that room because that area of Northern Virginia has had problems with MS-13, so she knows the actual issue here on that they were in the room for particularly well. To have her interrupt essentially go back and forth with the president saying we don't need this and have the president push back is extraordinary in that last little bit of tape you played before the pool feed ran out you heard the president saying I think a lot of people are probably going to agree with me that's a endangered targeted Republican member of Congress saying I do not agree with you and Donald Trump shutting her down and saying we're not going to get the support of the Democrats happening between the Republican president and a Republican congressman MSNBC's Garrett Hay breaking it breaking it all down uh, really well for us Garrett thank you very much